when you have nothing to stand on other than strong quality relationships, you are still as wealthy as they come because it's those connections. It's having those right people in your life that will truly be the greatest riches you will ever accumulate, both financially and from a quality of life standpoint. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And and I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Chris Harder Show. It's another Money Monday here where we talk all things money, how to grow your money, how to make more money, how to invest your money, all the things money. And best of all, where we believe that both prosperity and generosity can and must coexist when it comes to money. Now, today I thought I would do a kind of a cool show where I'm reflecting back on things I wish I would have known when I was younger. So for context, as I record this show right now, I'm 43 years old. And luckily, we're in an epic financial position, but only because we learned how to put ourselves in this position after we lost everything when I was about 30. And so I called this six financial rules for those under 30 because I wish I would have done so many things differently so I didn't have to go through the experience of radically rebuilding between the ages of 30 and 43. So here we go. Six financial rules for those under 30. Number one, take big risks. Like losing money is not that bad. It's definitely not as scary as what people are going to try and convince you it is. Don't be worried about bad investments. They don't matter in the long run. There are so many things I wish I would have you know, stepped up to the plate and, and swung at when I was under 30. Big opportunities. But instead, I squandered my money and, and did dumb things, you know, cars and clothes and stuff that really didn't amount to any type of investments or any type of assets. Had I taken some of these big risks, hindsight being 2020, I know for a fact I would have been wildly wealthy. You know, one of those things, this is funny, is Bitcoin. I remember when Bitcoin was $15. Now, I remember thinking this is like, this is the bet of the century. As I record this right now, it's about $64,000 a coin, not $15. So when you get that hunch, when you got, get that gut feeling, don't be afraid to take some big risks. You'll have more than enough time to recover from any kind of bad investments you make. That's a promise. The next rule for those under 30, embrace compounding interest as one of your wealth building plans. Now, this is the antithesis to what I just said, right? Number one was take great big risks, swing for the fences. Don't worry, if it's a bad investment, you'll have time to make it up. But then at the same time, have a secondary plan that starts as early as possible where you're embracing the power of compounding interest. If I really understood the power of compounding interest when I was young, had it been driven into me, had somebody said, Chris, sit down, do you realize that the average returns in the history of index funds, simple index funds, is 11% since the time that we've been tracking them, booms and busts included, the average returns are 9 to 11%, depending which index you're looking at. That means that using the rule of 70 or uh, using the rule of 72s that means that your money if just placed into a simple index fund would double every 7 years so imagine you're you're 18 and you do this and you put you find a way to save and you put $5000 away when you're 18 that means when you're 25 it'll be 10 without adding more money by the way And when you're 32, it'll be 20. And when you're 39, it'll be 40. 
And when you're 46, it'll be 80. And then when you are 53, it'll be 160. This is where it starts getting good. And when you are 60, it'll be 320 grand. That $5,000 will turn into 320 grand. By the way, if my math is wrong, I'm shooting from the hip there. Do your own math. Literally just spinning it out of my head there. Guys, but I, I, I'm sure that's accurate. Every seven years, your money would double. That's without putting more in. Now, imagine if you made regular contributions to it, how powerful that would be with compounding interest. Or imagine instead of doing that with five grand, you did that with 50 grand. Now it's 3.2 million. The power of compounding interest as just one of your wealth plans, right? So in your left hand, make that your risky swing for the fences stuff. In your right hand, at the same time, embrace the power of compounding interest as one of your long-term wealth plans. I wish I would have done that. Number three, your home, like the house that everyone tells you to rush out and buy and they say, you know, hey, you're better if you buy versus rent. Your home is not an investment. I have done so many episodes proving this mathematically. Your home is not an investment. It's just a home. Do not fall for the rent is pissing money away uh, lore. It's truly not. Go back and listen to, I forget what episode it is. DM me, I'll, I'll share it with you. But go back and listen to the episode where I mathematically proved to you that your home is a losing investment. Now, by the way, I'm not saying don't buy a home. What I'm saying is don't buy it thinking you're buying an investment. Buy it because you want somewhere to live, but stop fooling yourself that you think it's an investment. Your home is not an investment. Income producing property is. Rental properties are. Investing in, in uh, REITs. Though That's where real estate becomes an investment. But your actual house is not. So don't rush out to buy a home. I see so many people end up in massive credit card debt. Because they buy a home and then the roof goes out, the furnace goes out, and they need a new driveway, and there's flooding in the basement. Credit card, credit card, credit card, credit card, because they weren't ready financially to support the costs of owning a home yet. Number four, relationship capital is your greatest riches. Relationships are your greatest riches. There is no more capital more important than relationship capital. Now, Here's why I say this. Money is great while you got it. But when you don't have it, that's where relationships matter. Relationships can help you start a new business to become wealthy when you don't have money to begin with. They can invest in your business when you have strong relationships. Or they can introduce you to somebody who can invest in your business. Or they can tell you how to invest your money when you have the right relationships. When you have nothing to stand on other than strong quality relationships, you are still as wealthy as they come because it's those connections. It's having those right people in your life that will truly be the greatest riches you will ever accumulate, both financially and from a quality of life standpoint. I can tell you my best friends are worth far more than my $7 million home right now. That's a promise. So relationships are your greatest riches. Number five, multiple income sources are a must. And no matter what you're doing that makes good money right now, it'll never last forever. If you think you found the career and you can give me 101 reasons why this career is sustainable and it's going to be your career forever and you're going to love it forever and it's going to be stable forever and the industry will be there forever. Let me promise you it won't. It'll change. It'll change radically. You won't believe me when I tell you this right now, but it will. So you can't count on forever with one income stream, with one profession, with one career. You have to be focused on having multiple income sources from the beginning. And my rule of thumb for multiple income sources is one of them must be passive, meaning it's paying you even though you're not investing your time and energy in exchange for that money, right? It's paying you while you sleep. Royalties or investment income or rental property income or residual income from a network marketing company. These are all things that are passive income that where you can make money while you're sleeping, while you're not actively out there earning the income. It's still coming in. Another one of your income sources must be fully in your control. 
This means you're not relying on another company. You're not relying on another distributor. You're not relying on anything. You created this income source from your abilities, from your brain, from your resources. And there's nobody else that can take it away from you just because they make a bad decision or because the company goes under or anything like that. Those are my rules for multiple income sources. And they are an absolute must. The third rule for multiple income sources is build a life where if any one of them goes away, even your largest one, you still will not have to change your lifestyle tomorrow. Right? So if Lori and I lost our largest income source right now, we would not have to change a single thing in our lifestyle tomorrow. Work towards that goal ASAP. Make that what you're chasing. And number six, ego is your greatest overhead. Nothing will cost you more. I promise you. Not bad investments, not bad anything, not missing opportunities. Nothing will cost you more than your ego. It'll cause you to speak up when you shouldn't. And it'll cause you to not speak up when you should. It'll cause you to burn bridges and taint relationships. It'll cause you to damage your reputation. It'll cause you to spend your money that could be invested in compounding interest, that could be invested in the cool, risky things, that could be invested in you know, uh, rental properties and passive income. It'll cause you to spend that money on dumb things that literally have no value other than the dopamine hit that you get for that split second while you buy it. Ego will always cost you more than anything else on the planet. And if you learn to mitigate that, then you're going to have smooth sailing when it comes to building your future wealth. Guys, that's it. The six financial rules for those under 30. I wish I could go back and tell myself these things. Take massive risks. Losing money at an early age just doesn't matter. And at the same time, embrace compounding interest as one of your wealth plans. Don't fall for the trap that your home is an investment. Only income-producing property is. Relationships are your greatest riches. And multiple income sources are not a nice-to-have. They are a must-to-have. And last but not least, ego is your greatest overhead. Hey, listen, if you like these, every single morning I wake up and I share a financial tip, a money mantra, or a positive business perspective with you. Literally, my wife, I've woken her up to a mantra every single day for years now, probably more than 10 years, I'm guessing. And she's like, why don't you just wake other people up to this too? Like, this is so good. And so I do. Totally free. It's one of my ways of paying it forward. If you know me, you know my jam is generosity. No strings attached, no catch. You want me to text you? Text me the word daily to 310-421-0416. Again, text me the word daily to 310-421-0416. And every morning when I wake up, I will send you a money mantra, financial tip, or positive business perspective. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Always love and appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.